Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, happy Monday to you. Well, hopefully, your week is off to a great start. Or if you watch this at any other point in the week, hopefully, having a great day nonetheless. We continue with the latest Taman drop. His first release over from Big Planet Made. We checked out the title track, Sexy in the Air. And now we have the rest of the Eternal mini album to check out. Although, they say it's a mini album, but it's actually seven tracks long, and that's a lot of music indeed. A lot of music that I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle, considering this will be the third mini album that I've checked out today, and I've had a quite a long day, but we move anyways. Many different songs to choose from, and the main thing I kind of want to see is if... Now that he has moved labels from SM, if Taman's sound is going to change at all to maybe something that's, you know, more BPM oriented, or if we are still going to get the same type of Taman sound that we got during his SM era, that's what I'm here to find out. But ultimately, at the end of the day, this is a brand new Taman release, which means it's going to be very high quality and very fun to listen to. So let's move on forward, shall we? Here we go. Taman is a performer. He is an artist, but he's also a performer and a very good one at that. So a lot of his music oftentimes orients towards the performance side of things, which unfortunately won't help in case because we don't have any visuals to watch apart from color-coded lyric videos. And I mean, how much color-coded can it be if it's quite literally only one person on it? But I reckon some of these songs are probably going to get some performance uh, clips out of it, or at least when... Ever Taman goes on his live shows, we'll get performances of those. I'm pretty sure Horizon's gonna get one, considering it was teased at the end of Sexy in the Air, and I'm already very much liking what Horizon sounds like, based off the little clip we got at the end of the MV. At least at the end of the MV for the title track. But we still have a song before that to check out, because track number one, titled Goat, is up first. Lyrics by San Yoon, composition Taman and Kolda. Ooh. Kolda, I'm very familiar with from OSC Saturday, but Taman himself on composition, love to see it, Basecamp and Yukon of Zero Wave with Kolda and Basecamp on arrangements. Have not seen Kolda's name pop up in a hot minute, so this is going to be fun. <laughs> Short riser. It's kind of the same composition style of the Rizness. The execution is very different, but compositionally is very similar. Kind of like with the um, Nmix album, I am a little bit out of my element when it comes to a hip-hop track. I just don't understand the genre very well. I don't have a really close affiliation with it. So I'm just gonna listen to it and point out what I find out. Different pre chorus the second time around. That's interesting. The way he kind of accelerates the OMG REA and ESS is kind of satisfying to listen to. Oh, wait, hold on. We're getting classy with it now. That's a spicy chord. Hello, head voice. 
Oh, ho, 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 buttery. The highest head voice and then flipping it down into this low, almost vocal fry goat. Nice. Goat. O N G R E A T N S S. -S. Yeah, that contrast of the low goat delivery is nice. O-N-G-R-E-A-T-N-S-S, goat. O-N-G-R-E-A-T-N-S-S. Yo, I'm here for that. Like, I mean, again, I don't understand the nuances of this song, but I like listening to it. There's a fun rhythm aspect to it that's just like, ooh, ooh I can listen to it with a smile on my face. Um... I think the in how each individual verse is treated a little bit differently. I think is compositionally very interesting. Because first time around, that pre-chorus is so short. It's like two measures deep, and it's over in a flash. And all you get is like white noise for that first pre-chorus. But the second time around, you get a full-length pre-chorus with a nice melody and a nice development in the background. It's like, oh, hold on, oh wait a minute, that's a little bit different. And it's actually quite a tasty song, and. The reason I brought up the Riznus earlier from his previous album is the chorus release for the Riznus very much still lives in my mind because it's so kind of open-ended, right? Because it goes, you know, I got the Riz, and then it's like almost purely rhythmic. Goat is essentially taking the inverse formula of that, where instead of the vocals being that really high and stretched out vocal from the Riznus, it's that low and really rhythmically sharp chorus. And because of it, the instrumental section doesn't feel like such a detached element, feel like such a detached element from the, ver from the vocals like in the Riznus. And to be fair, in the Riznus, that was the whole point, is to separate instrument and vocal with goat. It's kind of as if they've brought that vocal back down, and now we're kind of like cohesively sitting at the bottom of the mix, and I think that's really interesting to me. But for someone who doesn't understand the nuances of hip hop, I like the rhythm we're going on with it. The rhythm's very clever, nicely done. We'll keep it sharpish because we have to really keep moving because we still have two more MVs to get through after this, and I'm so. But. Anyways, track number two is technically Sexy in the Air, which is the title track. We won't listen to it now, but I'll read off the credits one time. Uh, Sexy in the Air, lyrics by Ryan S. Jun, Zany, Jian, Jian, E. There are some very interesting producer names on here. Um, Perry and Nine June Nine. Composition, Rhinus Judd, Dwayne, Dem Joints, Abernathy Jr., Taman himself, um, Rakella, Serana, Pakurad, Dre Davidson, Sean Davidson, and Jun So, with Rhinus Judd, Dem Joints, and the Monarch on Arrangement. So, some familiar names on there. Um, which now takes us to track uh, number three, titled Horizon. Lyrics by Yi, Un, Hua, 153, Junbas, BBYO. And Jungun Ki of Lala Studio. Composition Laurent, Laurent Mark Louis, RL King Joa, Taman himself, Jacob Aaron of the Hub, and Noelio of the Hub. Arrangement Laurent Mark Louis, um, RL King Joa, Jacob Aaron of the Hub, and Noelio of the Hub. So, what? Same as. Same as the composition. Okay. And from the little snippet we got at the end of the Sexy in the Air MV, I already like Horizon. If it's the same song. Yes, it is. Please give us a tame and retro synth banger. Yes! Yes! First key with killer, now taming with horizon. Hell yes. Yes. 
There's some intricate rhythm stuff going on again, though. Oh, this is so gas. Oh. Oh, mess around with the mix one time. Oh, there's some really cool um, phrasing work going on. Because that chorus doesn't feel like it works in sets of four. Oh, there's something really cool about this. That's This isn't your typical retro synth banger. No, 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 no. Late start for the fight is for a course two. Interesting. Yeah, the song structure is not a simple four 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 four. Still a retro synth song though at the end of the day and I love it. A better days. Time your spatial horizon. Look, I am a sucker for a retro synth song. Okay. I want to establish that I am a basic bitch for a retro synth song. I was going to like Horizon no matter what happened. Was I correct? Absolutely. And I'm so glad that yet another shiny member has done a retro synth song because I loved Key's Killer when he dropped that last year. Now we got Taman dropping Horizon, so great success. But this is not a simple Retro synth song by any means. No, 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 no. This is clever. There is some really intricate like phrasing work going on. There's some really intricate rhythm stuff going on that you you make one misstep and you try to jump back on. You need to really know what's happening, or you're going to be off the mark like timing wise. And that's really impressive to me. Like this is a difficult song to follow. Which makes me even more curious as to how the choreography for this is going to connect. And just basing off of the final like five seconds from the Sex in the Air MV, we're going to get a performance video for this song. I don't know if I'll make a video on it, but I'm going to be keeping my eyes out for it because I'm really curious to hear like what it's going to sound, what or what it's going to look like. But man, retro synth is just so nice. There's just a nice. I love. The sharp pluckiness of that synthesizer. I love the high octane, just go, go, go attitude of the music. I love how fast it is. And there's just something about, you know, back when they were dropping this type of music in the 1980s, they were like, this was futuristic type music from the 1980s. 30, 40 years later, 40 years later, Jesus Christ, that's a long time ago, but 40 years later, I still think it sounds futuristic, and I love that that element has still held up, and I love how well Taman has pulled this off. I think his kind of treble-loaded voice really works for this genre. It's suited very well, and I couldn't be happier with it. Hell yes. We move on. Track number four, The Unknown Sea, lyrics by Zini, um, Z-N-E-E, -E and E. Literally that. Don't know what the pronunciation for it is, but we're gonna roll with it anyways. Apologies if I butchered that. 
Um, composition, Rhinus Jun, Taman. Oh, another Ta- Wait a minute. Oh, <gasps> Taman has credits on every single song compositionally. Well done you, sir. Well done you. Anyways, back on back on topic. Uh, composition, Rhinus Jun, Taman, Mitch Hansen, Jacob Ukor Ukorzak, uh, Samuel Lede. James William Miller and Sarah Davis with Rhinus John, Cutfather, Samuel Lede, and Jacob Ukorjak on arrangement. Ballad? I'm gonna wait until the beat comes in properly because this could go in a number of different directions. Is it gonna skip or is it gonna drag? Still not sure yet. Love the stacked vocals, though. There's the 12 8 beat I was waiting for. It's got a little bit of a natural gallop because of that bass triplet beat. Love that release. It was telegraphed away in advance, and it was exactly how I wanted it to be, but I love it. Karma Hearts. That like a Karma Hearts delivery being spoken like that is really cool. Oh, we're gonna retain this energy. Okay. Hello, String Orchestra. Get pretty with it. You could tell with the way that his delivery started on this last line that it was gonna hit. Kaji like karma hearts, miyadula. Good song, nice, powerful song, emotionally powerful song. It's very heavy song emotionally, even though it doesn't come across like it like immediately. There is a certain he emotional heaviness to it that's really tasty for me. Um, trying to figure out what that main beat of the song was right off the rip is kind of fun of a song of this nature. It's a song that... Give me one moment. Nope, no sneeze this time. Okay. Um, the Unknown Sea is one of those songs where... It doesn't reveal its hand right away. And it was evident in me trying to figure out what the feeling of the song was going to be, and the fact that it took until essentially the second verse to figure out what the feeling of this song was, is kind of proof of concept of that. A song that doesn't reveal its hand immediately makes it really interesting to try and figure out how you're supposed to listen to the song. So, 
had that triplet 12a beat not been in there in the background and you just replaced that with nice drawn out strings this would have been a just a really pretty slow ballad but because you have that 12 8 almost galloping beat in the background there's this nice rather quick forward movement in this song that's changed only by that one instrumental part that's how powerful the instrumental section in a song can be and the fact that you don't really know that until the second verse because the song so slowly develops from this really rather open-ended beginning into that fully established beat is there could, there's many different ways that song could have gone throughout the first verse had that been all you got in terms of reference points and stuff paired with the fact that Taman kind of coming in almost free meter vocally in that first couple of lines makes trying to pinpoint the feeling of this song that much harder in that first section it's this type of song that you have to listen through the entire thing to truly grasp the sensation of it. It's the type of song that you can get a lot of mileage out of because you can find a kind of different thing every single time you listen to it. And that slow development. You can't really enjoy the song without understanding and without listening to that proper development every single time. That's a deep song right there. I like that one a lot though. The Keeper Moving track on number 5, titled Crush, lyrics by Surin and Zini. Uh, composition, Rhinus Jun, Tame himself, James Daniel Lewis, Daniel Shah, Robbie J, Steven Manovsky, with Rhinus Jun and James Daniel Lewis on arrangement. Hello, big entry. I like this funky opening. Cool syncopation. Alright King, let's cook. That not an ah hit is nice, but this is funky. Oh, God, that is a filthy baseline, by the way. Hello. And then the reset. Yeah, the funk is strong with this one. Is that only like, you know, funk meets disco type of composition? Love the slight filtering as we get higher in his vocal there. release it's like oh it drops down a little bit but don't certain don't feel like it hey, this is a confident song this is the type of song that will put an extra little bit of sass in your strut as you're walking down the street Caught the bottom end out Only for a little bit Harmonizing the main words in the last chorus there So smart So smart It gives an extra punch to the song And you know, even though it's got the nice, hard, firm hits that a funk beat should have, it's actually not that imposing of a song. 
So adding the, like the little harmonizations in the in the important words in the chorus gives it a nice little bit of pizzazz to it. That's very tasteful. But yes, Funk Taman, so nice, so good. You know he's feeling it on a song like this. Oh, this is a good stretch. Hold on a second. Um, Horizon Unknown Sea to Crush is a solid one, two, three lineup. But yeah, Crush is fun. Cr Crush is also, much like Horizon, a song that's written in a genre that I really like listening to. And when the song started through the first verse, I was kind of thinking GTA Vice City opening theme vibes. I thought we were going to maybe go Miami Vice direction, but then we switched it into funk disco era and it was like, oh, wait, hold on. Not what I was expecting. Still love it regardless. And. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's very nice indeed. And. I don't know if this is just a me thing, but I find just a fat electric bass line like that just immediate stank face inducing and whenever a song puts on the stank face it's it's like um you know how certain we'll keep it in the k-pop realm but certain idols when they eat food that's really good they get angry you know you get the eyebrows of truth going on i feel like that happens in music too the stank face is like the extension or the music form of the eyebrows of truth just ooh, nice never that happens it's a good time that was a good time. Alright, track on number six, Deja Vu. Lyrics by Taemin, uh, uh, Young Ju, and Young. Uh, composition, Ryan S. Jun, Taemin, Sean Fisher, and Rike Maza. Sorana, Pakura, and Young Chance with Ryan S. Jun and Sean Fisher on arrangement. Whoa. Huge sound stage. What key are we in? What key are we just switch to? Oh, that string glissando up to the chorus is gross. Oh my goodness. This is artsy taming on display right here. I can I can visualize just a very pretty like performance going along with this the super high octave vocal partnering that part of the verse was really cool very subtle but really cool this is a dramatic song this is a really dramatic song Why does this feel like a shiny B-side? I don't know why it's giving me... My brain's telling me shiny B-side, but... Like a more sinister and dark version of a shiny B-side. It's like an epic. It really does listen like an epic.
gosh. <laughs> okay. Is this my favorite song on the album right now? I, it's hard to beat Horizon and Crush for me, but Deja Vu, compositionally, is on a different planet of existence. Oh my goodness. I mentioned that it kind of feels like an epic. It, re it The song listens like a story does. That's terrific. Oh, you know what would be really cool? Is a DPR Ian MV to go along with this song. Oh, the storytelling that you could do with a DPR Ian MV in this song. Oh my goodness. Hold on, my brain just cooked something for a second. Um, but um, non-existent visuals aside, Deja Vu is an unbelievably written song. It's complex. It's heavy. It's dramatic. This song tells a story. And it's a story of anguish, of betrayal, of combat, of victory, of resilience. It, it feels like a war story in song form. It's terrific. And I think the most impressive thing about this song for me is the sound stage and the range of sounds that this song takes. Say, for example, your normal standard pop song has your high end, which is your like high instruments and your vocal, your low end, which is the bass and the rhythm, so your drums or pad or whatever, and then you have the middle bits. This is your normal range for a pop song. Taman's Deja Vu essentially goes like that. Like the high ends are high, the low ends are low, and yet the middle is never neglected. So you get that full spectrum of sound across the board the entire time through the song. And because of it, there's so much of it. And it never feels like there's a portion missing from the song anywhere. The vocals, when they go soaring into the stars, the bass remains six feet under it it holds down the song but everything in the middle oftentimes on a song where you get really high vocals and a really low bass you lose that middle end not here not here and that's why this story feels like an epic it's because it feels like the battle between you know high and low the middle bit is no man's land. It's not just a battleground that exists. There's action going on in the middle. And you need to hear it. Whoa. Yeah, that's an artist song right there. Oh my goodness. And this now finally takes us to the final song on the album. Track number 7 titled Say Less. Lyrics by Taemin and San Yun. Composition, Rhinus John Taman, Dino, Meran Hosic, uh, Jordan Shaw, and Sam Merrifield. Not related to Whit Merrifield, um, probably. I don't know, baseball joke. Um, arrangement, Rhinus John and Dino, Meran Hosic. Voco to background vocals, big reverb, phaser effect. Oh my goodness. Octave stacking. Interesting. It's taking late night vibes and bringing in the synthesizer parts. Oh no. Oh no. This song has just made my ranking very difficult now. Uh. 
god, the reverb, the phaser, the octave stacking, the synthesizer. Oh, ho, ho, ho. It's like late night vibes, but not really. Oh my goodness. It's actually slightly dreamy. Post score second time around, very nice. That's how you finish Say Less. Oh, okay. That's a nice song. That's a great way to finish the album, too. It's punchy, but it's also a little bit chill. It's a little bit groovier. Still nice and firm. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. I am kind of a sucker for a late night aesthetic song, and now that, you know, it has ticked over to almost quarter past nine in the evening, it's prime time for this type of music, right? So I feel right at home. And you do get quite nice Taman vocals on this one, though. Even though they are digital vocals in there, quite heavy digital vocals, they're not auto-tuned digital vocals. It's, you know, that vocoded vibe, that little robotic feeling to it. And I think on a song like this, where the synthesizer plays such a heavy part throughout the song, stylistically, it makes sense why it's in there. And like, this is quite a busy album all things considered like especially you know that run from essentially horizon through deja vu and you can even throw in sexy in the air in there as well but this album really takes you on a journey and say less even though it's a nice firm song i think it still is that perfect album finisher because i don't think a ballad would have been appropriate on this album you know how so like essentially the general trend to finish an album is a more kind of chiller song, oftentimes a ballad, to naturally set the album back down on the ground, or end with one final encore party. Two very different directions that companies will go to finish their albums. Taman's more or less kind of goes in the middle, so you still get that firm energy from the party side of things, like the encore party vibe side of things, but you also get the chill grooviness from the ballad camp and it's nice it's really nice and i'm glad i'm glad say less is the final song on the album i think anything else it would have been inappropriate like a proper ballad too soft ending it with a party banger doesn't feel right for this album i think say less really is that goldilocks moment where that that is the way to finish that album nice it's a bit of a marathon for an album, but bro, those B-sides were kind of fire. Like, you know, bias um, towards Horizon aside, like, Crush and Deja Vu as a 1-2 combo is so nice. And then Say Less is such a nice, dreamy way to finish. But overall, this album is terrific. And you know what? Even if he's changed labels... It's still very much Taman music, and I'm so glad for it. I'm so glad we still have Taman music. But also, the fact that Taman had a hand in writing every single song on this album just makes it that much sweeter for me. Like, I find that when an artist performs their own music or has a hand in writing their own music for their own albums, it just hits a little bit harder. The fact that this entire album has Taman on composition credits just hits so nice and so sweet. Thumbs of approval from me. But I am going to leave this one here. Thank you all for listening along with me. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. One last request from me today. Let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world. Whether it be checking in with your friends or family, holding the door open for somebody, or even picking up a piece of trash off the street. Just one small act of kindness that may brighten up someone else's day-to-day. 
and know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life for whatever reason it may be, even though I'm just some guy no, 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 who waffles about music in his free time, know that I will always be a friend, ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.